<clears throat> Hi. Let's say you've had a fun weekend at the range and you shot up some of your hard reloaded brass and you've got several cans full <laughs> of, of dirty brass. Of course, it's time to clean it before you reload it. And you can clean it with a pen. Did you know that? Well, no, not this kind of pen, of course. But a pen like you would use in a tumbler. These are little stainless steel pens, and I'm sure you can't see them from there. So I've got one right here on the end of this magnet, and I'm gonna let you see it up close. That little pen is a quarter of an inch long by, I think about a 16th of an inch in diameter, something like that, I can measure it and see. And um, stainless steel. You get about five pounds of these things inside of a tumbler. Which, let's see if you can see that down in there. Oh, again. They're there. Five pounds. And then you take all of your brass, you put it in there, and you add to it a couple of things. Well, three things. Water, soap, and a product that will really make the brass shine. And I'll show you all about it coming up next. But first, I've got to decap all my brass. And the only reason I do that is because this process will result in a clean primer pocket. Now, if you know anything about handgun reloading, you know it's really not necessary to clean primer pockets. Dirty primer pockets, honestly, work just as well. But... As long as you're going to all this trouble, and the fact that it will clean it, there's just something aesthetic about it. I don't know how to say it other than that. And if you just really take kind of great pains and pride in your work, well, you want it to be the very best it can. And so there you go. And that's the only reason for doing this, in my opinion, is to have just this really, really clean, light new brass. And if that excites you, watch on because I'll show you how to do it. Otherwise, see you next time. In case you're wondering how many pieces of brass you can tumble using this method, the answer is five pounds. Doesn't matter really how many because obviously with small pistol, you'll have more than you would with big rifle. And what we have here is about three pounds, thereabouts. So you can see this pretty good sized little stash. You can do more than that. You can do half again that many. Okay, we're ready to go. We have five pounds of stainless steel pins down inside of our Thumbler's Tumbler Model B. We have some Dawn dishwashing liquid ready to go, and this product called Lemmy Shine. You can get it at uh, Walmart, you can get it at Kroger, Winn-Dixie, grocery stores, you know, uh, Home Depot, I don't know. But it's, it's in the, in the uh, uh, dishwashing products, and it's normally used to uh, make your glasses shine and so forth. Well, it, it does wonders for brass, and uh, we'll, we'll see how that works out. Let me move these out of the way, and let's add our brass. Pretty good. Drop one, two, drop two. Okay, there we go. Now we'll add our water. And in case you're wondering how much water, I'll show you. You want to come to about an inch, roughly, from the from the top, about an inch. And I always shoot in a one-second shot of Dawn, and then I add about that much Libby shine. That's probably more than you've seen other people do, um, but uh, my experience has been pretty good using that much. Tend to get shinier 
brass. I've had my Thumbler's Tumbler Model B since about 1972 or three. And, um, oh, before I put that on, the, uh, and I've used it a lot. Uh, about a year or two ago, I, I called them and ordered a replacement rubber gasket this one that goes on top and a new set of rollers and uh, the little belt in other words the rubber products G got them in a few days and and it was like new uh, I mean the thing is just not gonna wear out and if you if you're you're looking at one and you see that price tag you, you may have a little sticker shock and um, but I'll tell you this, I mean, here's one that's about, what's 40, 40, 45 years old, something not quite, but anyway, it's getting on up there. And uh, 19, whatever that is. <laughs> and it's still running fine. I've had to upgrade it, you know, I'm no upgrade. I've had to re replace some parts in it one time. And that was it, super super product yeah now I will tell you this the tumbling methods using the vibratory tumblers is usually faster but if you want to do the wet tumbling this is the way you have to go all right here's my trustworthy old model B tumblers tumbler and like I said I, a year or two ago replaced these two shafts which included the rubber roller things and the nylon bushings and I also got a replacement belt and that little shiv comes with it on the shaft already so that's pretty much it you want to make sure you put it on there with the screws on the opposite side otherwise they want to run into that pulley and the operation of this thing could not be more simple you plug it in and by the way <clears throat> I told you it was a five pound limit on the brass and that's because five pounds of brass and five pounds of media and that much water will equal the total load that the Thumbler's Tumbler Model B is designed for and that's the reason for five. all right we got our handy dandy tumbler up here so let's take the lid off. All right. All right, we got the, got the screws on. Let's take this lid off. And of course, what we have in there now is some very, woo, black sudsy water. Woo, there's some pretty brass in there. So, Let's, um, let's zoom back a little bit so you can see. Uh, you can see it. Let's see. That amazing. Oh, mm, dirty. brass and our little uh, steel pins at this point. hold your fingers right here in these little corner places kind of create a little dam like with your fingers and uh, hold back any of those little pins try to come down usually two maybe three wrenches 
all it'll take. Markedly cleaner. One more. I actually let this one run longer than usual. Oh yeah, see it's coming up clear pretty much. Just a little bit of a little bit of cloudiness to it, so that's plenty. More than enough. What I'm trying to do is keep from having any um, soap residue. You can go to the thing just about, yeah, all the way over. That gets most of it. All right, next step. Okay, here's our handy media separator. And we're just going to dump... All of the brass in there, you see. There's still plenty of pins left inside the drum, but that's okay. And so, now we'll separate it. And just to give my ears a break. Okay, that was probably about a minute, a minute of solid tumbling. And there's the brass. It really looks looks great down in there. Let me let me move it in closer so you can see. So here's our brass, and this is the kind of thing I'm talking about where where you have a 45 case and down inside it a little nine millimeter case and yet I'm not sure if you can see it or not but that yeah there it is that 45 case is clean all the way to the bottom and the little nine millimeter case is clean all the way to the bottom so no, no problem here's here's another one. Oh no it's not sorry um, but I'm sure there'll be some more in here, but they'll just come apart. <clears throat> All right, here's a a 40 and a 9, but you see they just slide apart. And again, down inside, it's clean. That one doesn't look quite as spick and span, but the little 9 is. It's clean. So, no problem with them... Uh, being mixed together like that, you won't you won't get them jammed up together and just locked uh, tight as Dick's hat band. Here's uh, a 40, what is this, 40, 45 Colt, and aha, so we may have an exception to our rule here. My fingers are wet, I may have to have some little pliers to get this one out. And this is what I was talking about. This is what happens. Let me go get some pliers. Okay, here's the 45 long Colt with a, I'm not sure what's in here. Uh, a 357, 357 SIG was down in there. And it wasn't stuck all that tight, but with my wet fingers, I couldn't pull it apart. But now, see, those just fall apart. Um, Maybe, it may be that we don't want, see that just falls apart. We don't want to use the 44 Magnum and 45 Colt cases in here. I don't know, I don't know. So far it's been one, but I didn't have all that many of the big cases in here. So we'll see, but definitely the 45 ACP works fine with the nine millimeter and others um, they just fall apart so 
looks like it's a good to go situation uh, as far as mixing your case sizes in the tumbler. Now we have the uh, brass separated from the media so we can come in here Spread it out on a towel for drying and uh, you know, I guess it would probably be a good time to, while they're wet, pull apart any of these that we see stacked up together. Uh, you know, what was that, four? <laughs> So, not, uh, not, not a real big deal. Let me get down there a little more closely and get them apart. But I think that's it. So, there you go. We'll let them dry. Okay, now we want to get our pins <coughs> that are down in here back <coughs> into the uh, tumbling drum for later use and um, an indispensable tool is one of these it's a little magnet fantastic things and you'll see you'll see why in just a second but just kind of get them down in there and don't worry about the water And this is hands down the worst part of this whole task because at this point you have to just these things they stick you know what I'm saying the water and it glues them in there to the to the sides and, but <clears throat> what's this taking about a minute I think it takes a minute I consider to be instantaneous at this stage of my life. There's a few more. You can always come back and get them. All right, if, there's, if, if you're really anal, like I am, and people who do this sort of thing must be, go in there, and if there are any strays, well, there's just one. You can pick it up with a, the magnet and stick it down in there. But That's it, and drain out this little bit of excess water. And set it aside if it's damp who cares it's stainless steel it does not rust it does not hurt it so it'll be ready for you next time here's some <clears throat> pretty clean brass this is a 45 Colt and I'm showing you the primer pocket because that's one of the main reasons for going through all this exercise and trouble but the other thing is what it does inside and let's see if I can kind of show you that well I'm having a little trouble here let's try down inside yeah well you get the idea anyway it's it's clean all the way down to the bottom rest in peace 45 Colt no Remington Peters 45 Colt super squeaky clean primer pocket doesn't make one bit of difference in the way it shoots I promise you that test after test from me and a million other people have shown that you you're just wasting time cleaning out primer pockets on the other hand since it's so easy to do why not and it leaves your brass so perfectly clean all the way down inside all the way down to the bottom I wish I could show down in there a little better but you get the idea